This is News 13's Coronavirus Virtual Town Hall. I'm George Roberts. And I'm Marie Johns. Here in the Poconos, both Carbon and Wayne counties will move into the green phase of the governor's reopening plan. And with that comes new guidelines for businesses and customers. Joining us on our program is Marlon Kistner, Executive Director of the Pocono and Carbon Chambers of Commerce, and Kathy Henderson, Director of the Carbon Chamber and Economic Development Corporation. Thank you both for being with us today. Thank you for having us. Well, what, what a few months it has been. Oh, it has seemed like forever to get here, but we are finally going to be turning green in carbon and uh, Wayne counties. Uh, I know that both of you are from carbon. Marlon, what does it feel like that it is finally here? Well, Marie, it feels great, unbelievable. It's amazing what our businesses have done, how they have truly been resilient during this time from day one, and now knowing that on Friday, especially, especially our restaurants being able to open their doors for indoor dining, our salons who have been just really dying, being able to do business now, our barber shops, you know, those folks have really been the ones that have hurt. So. We're just thrilled on their behalf, and we're just happy that we were able to navigate so much of uh, the uncharted waters up until this green phase. Right, right. Kathy, how, what have you heard from uh, businesses in the community? A uh, great sigh of relief, actually, that they can reopen their doors, even if it is 50% occupancy, appointment only, uh, you know, still following the CDC guidelines. Uh, but they're excited and, and ready to go. And we are excited for them. And we here at CCEDC are, are ready and willing to help them navigate. Marlon, have you been hearing from a lot of businesses, please help us, tell us how to do this, tell us, help us interpret what these rules are? Because everything is so new, so much is being thrown at everyone. It's a lot to absorb. So I know there are a lot of heads. Um, what, how have you guys been dealing with that? Yeah, Marie, I think we've had this great ability to help on every level, but I do think that the best help the chamber has been able to give to our businesses is those one-on-one -on -one conversations because not every business um, has the same types of guidelines. Um, they're not sure how to navigate now. I'm going to yellow to green. Um, you know, how many people can I have walk through my door? If I'm a restaurant, what does that look like? Do I have to have the plexiglass up? all of these different guidelines that really are tough to navigate. We have a lot of that information on our site and some businesses are able to navigate that through CDC and, and also through the governor's orders. But uh, we've been able to really help with those one-on-one -on -one conversations so that they're feeling honestly at ease so that they know that they're doing the right thing. And I do have to tell you, our businesses in Carbon County, they want to do the right thing so people feel safe, secure, their employees feel safe. I haven't really heard of uh, many that are like not worried about that. So we're just excited to hear that with this reopen on Friday, that really our visitors, our residents should feel really, really good about getting out there and supporting local again. Let's talk a little bit about the green phase uh, for the benefit of businesses and for customers that will be coming to these businesses. Kathy, uh, let's uh, talk first about bars and restaurants. What is uh, going to be allowed in the green phase? So for bars and restaurants, you will be able to go inside, but it will only be 50% occupancy. Um, they still have to got, uh, follow the CDC guidelines, wearing face masks at all times uh, until you are seated, at least in the restaurant or the bar. Uh, then you can remove your face mask, of course. Uh, and there's specific guidelines that restaurants have to follow uh, with regards to how they bust the tables, how their servers serve the guests, uh, even down to using uh, throwaway uh, place settings. Uh, menus are supposed to be one use only and very small. They were also advised to perhaps instead of a, a regular menu to have a board uh, of their specials at the door when people come in. So they're not spending so much time making a decision on what they want to eat. Marla, do you have anything to add to that? Yeah, I would say I definitely agree. I think the one thing, too, is just uh, a message out there. This is all new uh, uncharted waters, and we want to make sure that people that are going to be heading out to eat, give yourself a little bit of extra time. Um, please follow the guidelines that 
the restaurants have in place uh, so that your experience is really good. Some of our restaurants are telling uh, our patrons that it'll be about an hour and a half that you'll have at the table. That way you just don't have the luxury to sit around you know, for three hours. Um, that way we can get people in to really enjoy the indoor dining again. Yeah. That's true. Yeah, we do have to remember that these businesses really need to get back open and they're just trying their best to be able to do that. And they're probably not thinking this is the best they've ever been able to serve people, but they're just happy to open their doors and we really need to get out there and support them. Is that what you're thinking, Kathy? Absolutely, yes. Uh, we were able to actually go out and eat on Friday evening uh, as an out, at an outdoor uh, establishment. And it was like coming out of Brigadoon. <laughs> you know, all the tables were full. Uh, people were enjoying themselves. The servers were doing an excellent job of abiding by the CDC guidelines, and so were the patrons. Uh, and people just have to understand, they have to be patient. The restaurants are doing the best that they can. The servers are doing the best that they can, and we're all working together and making it work. Right. So, so last week, of course, they opened up and they were doing uh, outdoor dining, which had its own set of rules. Now we're going to be allowed to do some indoor dining in Carbon and Wayne counties, but uh, you have to understand that there's different rules now, and the servers and the owners of the place have to, you know, make sure that they know what they're doing. And as you're coming there as a customer. I think the, the, the big word here, Marlon, is patience. Am I right? That's correct, George. Again, we want to make sure that the experience is safe and secure and the workers are feeling really good so that our patrons are feeling really good. And, you know, we were just up at uh, Blue Mountain Resort Slopeside. They have everything in place, uh, hand sanitizer, signage, all of that to make sure that that experience is really going to be uh, top notch for when those doors open for indoor diving. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about masks because this has been a point of contention with a lot of people. Um, as far as the understanding is that masks are, are not required. It is something that the business has the choice of, of doing. I mean, are we correct on this? Well, George, I could jump in. What I've read in the green phase is stated that when you're entering a business, you need to make sure you have your mask on upon entrance. And so if you take, for example, again, a restaurant, you get to your table, you can take your mask off. Uh, so I think really that is even for the small businesses that are opening uh, with our hairdressers, I would suggest you walk in, register with your mask on. And then when you get to your chair, that you know potentially you could take that mask off. So again, that's what I have read the rules to be that walking into that business to have the mask. Um, Kath, I'm not sure if you've heard anything different. I, I agree, Marlon, that's the same thing that I've heard. And I would do it anyway, just to be on the safe side because at this point it's just so brand new to everyone. Uh, we just wanna be safe. We wanna make sure not just that the customers are safe, but the employees and the business owners too. So it makes sense. You're erring on the side, side of caution. And once you get into the environment, see who you are surrounded by and how everyone's feeling, some places are deciding, OK, it, we're good. It's a small, we're a small group. We're staying six feet apart, whatever the case may be. So I think moving forward, we have to be aware of that because there have been this there's been this group of people out there that become the uh, unwarranted mask police who uh, want to <laughs> call the cops every time somebody doesn't have a mask on their face and they have to realize you know it's a comfort level thing uh, I, that's that's my belief anyway Marlon yeah I agree and again I think the best way uh, to really be able to go in and patronize our stores our shops ask the questions uh, a lot of times I've been telling folks, you know, give the restaurant a call and say, what is your protocol? Um, let me know what I have to do to be safe. And, you know, am I wearing a mask when I get up to go to the bathroom? You know, that kind of a thing. So just check in with who those um, businesses are so that you're respecting their rules. Uh, we had posters made up really to make sure that our visitors and, and all of our patrons know, look, we, we are so happy you're here, but please respect the rules of our businesses. Um, so that we keep you safe. Right, and truly still realize all those rules are still changing every day for even yeah. individual businesses, right? Right, right. 
Let's talk a little bit about um, shopping centers and malls. What exactly uh, are we going to be doing here at the, uh, have you heard about retail operations? Are they, are they counting the number of people that come through the door? Are they going to be doing that with shopping malls too? Marlon, I would defer that one to you. I'm not sure the answer on that one. Well, I have definitely heard at this point, the big question was making sure that the stores who have the openings on the outer parts of the malls are equipped with being able to handle the folks coming in, doing the counts, watching people coming in and out, following CDC guidelines, uh, but they're definitely open. I, I know I've heard the malls uh, are ready to go. Again, they're following guidelines just like a small shop would follow. Uh, watching the number of people, watching the guidance, the distance, uh, but uh, they're ready to go. And uh, they're in dire need, as we know, to be open. And so they'll be following those rules, just like a small store owner would, or, you know, look at our Walmarts, our Giants, all of our big grocery stores that have been handling that. I would imagine they're going to be doing things a lot the same way. Uh, let's go to uh, Kathy and talk about uh, personal care services, things like uh, nail and hair salons. Uh, they are opening in the green phase, Kathy. What do they have to, uh, ha what do they have to follow and what do uh, patrons need to know? Uh, the hair salons, nail salons, those types of personal care uh, businesses, they can only operate in a 50% occupancy uh, by appointment only. Uh, and much the same guidelines with the face masks and you know things like that. You can't just, even a barber shop, you cannot just walk in. Uh, you have to have an appointment um, or or wait in line or you know it depends. I spoke with a barber shop owner yesterday. Uh, she questioned on what was the best practice for her, and I suggested uh, if you can't do appointments, at least have a sign-in sheet. Uh, and just have people sign in and leave the business until they are either text or called that they can come back for their appointment. Uh, because she said in the barbershop business, a lot of the generational customers that she has are not used to having an appointment. They're used to just walking in and getting their hair cut. So it's going to be a learning curve for those customers and for those types of businesses as well. But she's excited. She is um, just can't wait to open and see your customers again. Mm -hmm. So now we've been talking about green means go, but green really doesn't mean go as fast as you can. Um, so you're talking about the salons and, and how they're able to open and the different personal care services. But what happens from here? Do you have any idea, Marlon, what happens next? Because now it's going to be green, greener, greenest. What are we, how are we going to do this? <laughs> Yeah, Marie, that's a great question. And, and honestly, it's it's really a discussion that we have at the chamber just about every day because we were trying to stay ahead of the curve before when we were in red, we were thinking way ahead in yellow and yellow green. So right now, that's our question. And we really want some answers because at this point, green is some restrictions uh, that have been lifted. But as many of you know, our restaurants, even only at 50% capacity or our businesses, that's not going to cut it. And we need to make sure that this economy is back on track, that we have those answers. And I'm hoping really in the next couple of weeks, we hear that we can't stay in green forever. Um, that green guidance, if you think about it, we jumped from 25 people to 250 people. And so where are we going to head then, you know, with this next phase? And so I think that our healthcare professionals and leaders have been incredible. Our hospitals are doing well. Everybody's following the guidelines. So now it's time to really get the health back of our economy at this point. So uh, we're in a lot of those discussions. We're pushing the, the bringing back um, business. And so uh, that's a huge question. We want answers as well. Now you talked about large gatherings, um, 250 people. Obviously our uh, county fairs, many of the events in the small towns, they've already been canceled because they just can't have you know, only 250 people at these events. They sometimes get thousands and thousands or tens of thousands when you're talking about a, a county fair. So those, those are canceled, but what about things like um, concert uh, venues, theaters? Have you heard anything about when they may be able to start you know, doing shows again? You know, the thing I've heard, George, is in that, even in that 250 capacity, 
you have to have those guidelines as well. So that may look more like maybe a partial event in person and maybe a partial Zoom event uh, so that people are still feeling safe and protected. If there's an area that you can handle the 250, uh, and again, you can do that. I think the, the concerts, we haven't heard anything about that or just the you know the tens of thousands of people or even 2,000 people. I just don't think at this point uh, that we see that happening anytime soon uh, because of again of the strict guidelines of that 250 now uh, again we know you know the virus there, there's there's nervousness of, about it resurfacing and no vaccine so that all plays part in that uh, but again I think even heading to the 250 we're excited about it at the chamber uh, we're going to work with our venues to see you know how we can do this uh, to make sure the people that want to be together will be together for these events. Yeah, that's good. But like for 250 uh, people, um, you know, at a concert, for example, they're not going to make, make a profit. The money. Yeah. yeah, they're not going to really make money in a yeah. concert venue. So that's that'd be difficult. Mm -hmm. Have you heard of any businesses that have you, you talked about resilience? And I know all of our businesses wanted to be resilient. But are there businesses we're losing through all of this? And are there people you've talked to that have explained their stories to you that are, I'm sure, very heart wrenching um, when it comes to a business closing because of something like this, Kathy? It's, it was very difficult for me to deal with in the early stages of this pandemic. I spent weeks speaking to over 50 of our local businesses who were in shock. Um, they were panicking. They didn't know exactly what to do or how they were going to navigate these waters. And we were here at the chamber for them, for support, for uh, directing them in the right direction, for funding, helping them to apply for the state program, the uh, COVID work, um, uh, working capital program that quickly ran out of funds uh, and including the, the federal program. Some of them uh, were able to qualify for them and some of them weren't. A lot of our smaller businesses are falling through the cracks of those different loan programs. So uh, we here at the chamber, we're working on our own loan program for just those businesses that have fallen through those cracks and we're here to help them through that. Um, but there are a lot of businesses that we haven't heard of, I'm sure, that are going to either be closing their doors or going to have a very difficult time reopening because they've been closed for so long. Mm -hmm. You know, um, a lot of people are now doing the teleworking, which is a new term we haven't read, you know, a year ago, I never would have heard of teleworking, right? You just <laughs> wouldn't have even talked about that. But, but now that they're doing it, uh, are we finding that some of these businesses are realizing they don't need maybe a physical office or maybe even a big physical office, and most of their employees will be working uh, from home? And that's gonna, do you see that changing the business landscape? I do, I, I think, see it, I'm sorry, Martha. Go ahead, I see, it, I see it changing the, the landscape in commercial real estate uh, because those types of uh, facilities that are expanding or, or have been creating new office complexes um, might find themselves in a different marketplace because those companies are realizing it's going to uh, help them with their overhead. If, they're, if they don't have to pay for space for employees to work, if they can work from home and telework, um, it's going to totally change the, uh, the landscape, I think, of quite a few companies. Uh, it'll be interesting to see how commercial real estate shakes out after this all okay. is, uh, is worked through. But right. yeah, I truly believe a lot more people are going to be working from home because of that. Marlon? Yeah, Marlon, is our main street, are our yeah, main streets gonna be different? I agree with what Kathy has to say. I think on the business side, we were able to adjust so quickly at the chamber and turn our events into virtual events. And what I found is that the businesses really kept going. They really enjoyed the virtual events. And I heard that there's definitely some organizations and companies that will continue to work from home because they were very successful during this time. So you're definitely going to see either a hybrid of maybe some office time, some time at home, and even some of these businesses that clearly said to us, we're not gonna have uh, office space. Mm -hmm. Our office space will be in our home. Right, Marlon, uh, you said that they really enjoyed the virtual events, and I think a lot of people did, but they were enjoying those virtual events 
compared to nothing. So now if they now the next step will be moving forward when you can get face to face, are they going to, you know, enjoy the virtual events or the face to face more or some of each? So I guess that remains to be seen, Marlon. It does. And the feedback that we received, Marie, is it's interesting. I just got an email yesterday. Uh, from one of our chamber members she said marlon thank you so much for continuing to host these because there's times i can't leave my office so i think we're going to see a little bit of both some of those folks that can really just log in and connect uh, so maybe we do that one month and then maybe next month we bring everybody back together face to face so uh, the silver lining is we found a new way to do business we found new folks that were able to connect that may not have been able to get in their car, do the half hour drive, go to the event and come home. So I think it's an opportunity to continue our virtual events, but I'll tell you, people do miss seeing each other. So um, they'll be happy when we can finally be face to face. Yeah, I, sure. I agree with that. Uh, Kathy, big question. Is now a good time to open a business? Absolutely. Um, I've written an article on that subject. Um, during, during downturns, economic downturns, historically has been the best time for someone to come up with a new idea uh, that might have been born out of this pandemic. And so yes, today, this is the time to open a new business, uh, to come to the chamber for assistance, not just in financial assistance, but also in how to start a business, how to write a business plan, how to help with your financials, marketing, all of those things are provided free from us uh, through Wilkes University Small Business Development Center. Uh, so yeah, if someone has a new way of building a new mousetrap out there uh, because of the pandemic or even not because of the pandemic, they've come up with something different. Absolutely, right now is the time to do it. And Kathy, you spoke about um, commercial real estate and the fact that you know there may be some openings. Is it also uh, to be said that uh, there will be deals on leasing and renting space in these shopping areas. I, I believe so, yes, because there's going to be companies that are closing. It's, it's a fact of life that happens. Uh, so there's going to be space available. What those spaces are going to end up looking like is going to be an interesting thing. Um, we're not quite sure where that's going to end up. Uh, but for our main streets, it's going. we were just on the cusp of really taking off in some of our local Main Street uh, uh, initiatives here in Carbon County. Uh, and this has kind of put the, the brakes on some of those initiatives, but we're not giving up. Uh, we're still moving forward with some of those um, initiatives here in Lee Heighton and Lansford and, and Weatherly and all of our small communities because we have to. Mm -hmm. uh, what it's going to end up looking like, especially in, in cities like Allentown with their rebirth downtown, um, it'll be interesting to see what happens there. But I honestly think that some people are going to be pulling back. Some companies might be looking to downsize uh, and create different opportunities for different, uh, different venues. Mm -hmm. Marlon, what do you think? Do you think the downtowns will see a resurgence quickly after this is all said and done? I do, Marie, and only because I have seen them continue to survive and uh, to be resilient through this, you know, the curbside pickup, the online, uh, the e-commerce, I, I can tell you from some of our businesses that were really slow to have e-commerce, that they jumped right into that because they had, then had that ability to sell their product online. So I, I do think that they're gonna come back pretty quickly uh, because they've really been doing the business and they've been able as a small business to figure out how to do it with one or two people. I also think, Marlon, to add on to that, I think that a lot of our local residents are now realizing uh, what's in their downtowns. If they've been used to going to the big box stores in the county or in their area, and now they may not feel comfortable being around so many people, uh, they're more comfortable going to a smaller business, such as your smaller neighborhood hardware stores and things like that. So I think they're going to rediscover what they have in their backyard. And appreciate it too, right? And appreciate it, yes. Kathy, have you checked in uh, on the health of some of our really small towns, such as like Lansford, Summit Hill, Nesquahone, some of these areas that, that are traditionally small areas, um, small downtowns, businesses, some of them hanging on by a thread. What, uh, what do you know? What's going on in those towns right now? 
uh, I think they're all experiencing the same the same uh, stressors. You know, how are we going to continue? I've had to shut my doors for two months. I've had to lay off my employees. Am I going to be able to get them back? Uh, am I going to be able to open my doors? Do I have the funding to purchase inventory? Um, you know, what's it going to look like? Do I have PPE enough for my employees and myself? So um, I think all of our small towns have the same, the same issues, uh, but I know we're Carbon County strong and we're gonna do it. All right, and Marlon, just one other question. Uh, those that are still having problems with their business, uh, they can reach out to the chamber and how can the chamber help them? Absolutely, George. Please do. You can call us, email us, text us, stop by. Uh, we are open for business for your business. So it's really, really crucial. Uh, what we're hearing too is there's job openings. So those people who are out there that are looking for employment, uh, we have job postings on our website as well. Or if you're a business in need of finding employees, we can post your jobs and again, navigate you through now the changes that happen with the PPP funding uh, and a lot of the things that you're seeing that, that you just don't know how uh, to decipher or again, what button to click or who to call. So uh, we have a lot of opportunities here. Uh, we have healthcare programs for our businesses. We also have uh, some free 20 minute consultations with attorneys that we can give you as well. So there is so much that we can do to help you. So please reach out. All right. Well, thank you both, Kathy and Marlon, for being with us today. And thank you so much for your hard work and using all that brain power, brainstorming and coming up with ideas to help our businesses. I'm sure they really, really appreciate it. And we appreciate Absolutely. you being with us here today. I'm Marie Johns. Thank you for having us. And I'm George thank Roberts you for your local coronavirus news. You can watch the Pocono Valley and night reports right here on BRC 13.